A warm welcome everyone, my name is Nick and welcome to the episode 2 in this new series which is Spectrum Talk. This is part 2 following on from uh, the last episode on Monday where we're looking at Ultimate Play the Game. We looked at some of the games from 1983, a UK based company in Leicestershire and um, run by the Stampers, Tim and Chris and it was a big family outfit which eventually changed its name to Rare and sold um, to Microsoft in 2002 for 300 and 77 million so it was a bit of a success story now I prefer the early games from Ultimate Play the Game a classic company uh, from 1983 and those ones included a Jetpack, Cookie, a Pust, Trans Am, Lunar Jetman and the wonderful Attic Attack. Attic Attack was a splendid game now this time round we're going to look at games that come out in 1984 and 1985 exclusively on the ZX Spectrum. There were a few other Ultimate games that's come out on the Commodore 64 and the Amstrad CPC, but this is Spectrum Talk, so we'll just focus on Spectrum ones. Now, although less games come out in 1984 and 1985, three in 84 on the Spectrum and two in 1985, um, 1984 did see the software house's second biggest seller ever. The first release game of 1984, although not the first written game, was Saber Wolf, um, which was um, a great 2D jungle sort of game. Uh, Night Law was to be written first by the Stampers, but it wasn't released till the end of the year because they thought the technology was a bit too advanced and it would have hindered the sales of the first two games they released. In Saber Wolf, it's quite a nice game. You control a man called Saber Man, funnily enough, and he must explore a 3D jungle maze is bright and it is colourful although it's very very difficult which quite often these games were. Released on the Commodore 64 as well this game had a staggering 256 screens to explore and complete. Now they all look fairly similar because the vegetation so without a map this game would have been um, almost impossible but as I say it was their second biggest seller ever just behind a jetpack the previous year so this really put the company back on the map. There was random spawning enemies all over the place you couldn't hang around for more than two seconds or something would get you and you had to collect pieces of a hidden amulet around the jungle fauna uh, then use that to get past a wolf or a guardian at the end of the game. It probably goes without saying I never completed this one, but if you did, comment below. I have reviewed this game a long, long time ago when my sound wasn't brilliant, so maybe I should do a revisited series and go back there. But we kick off this um, this Spectrum talk with Saber Wolf. Please put your memories of this game below. Did you complete it? Was it one of your faves? Or, like me, did you really prefer the games, the more simpler games which came out in 83? The next game that Ultimate released in 1984 come to mixed reviews and I was a little bit disappointed with the quality of it. It was Underworld, where Saber Man again, you control him, so it's a Saber Man series as Night Law is. At this time, instead of being trapped in a jungle, he's trapped in a castle. Um, odd control mechanism here and the jumping seems a little bit weird. 600 screens to try and navigate, um, but essentially you must escape again. There'll be lots of points in this game where um, you think you've explored everything and there'll be a ledge you should jump on or something you should do to explore more of it. Um, I haven't seen all 600 screens. If you have, then let me know. Did you complete this game? Uh, so yeah, in a series really. Saber Wolf, then Underworld. 1984. I didn't spend a great deal of time on this one. I probably preferred others in the series and I, to be honest with you, um, I spent most of my time on Attic Attack from 1983. That's where it was for me for exploration castle type games. And they certainly saved the best to last. As I mentioned before, this game was written first before Saber Wolf or Underworld, but the uh, Chris and Tim Stamper held this one back deliberately because they didn't feel the market was ready. And it was a big step up in gaming. They weren't the first to use this system by any means, but they're probably the best to implement it. Uh, it was the release of Night Law, which again you controlled as Saber Man. Such was the impact and popularity of this game, although ridiculously difficult again, it did win the Golden Joystick Award for Best Game of the Year in 1984. It's a collecting objects game again, this time in glorious 3D isometric. You have 40 days and 40 nights to collect um, different objects there um, to escape the castle. Um, there's puzzles to solve, you must move around blocks, uh, do jumps, get timings right to go past guards and port um, As a kid this game was absolutely 
um, awe-inspiring. The box on this game was absolutely sensational. Um, sometimes I spent hours just looking at the box of some of these Ultimate games, and they really had um, a bit of showmanship. They had the art of panache. Um, they did stuff with a lot of style, Ultimate Play of the Game. One bad thing about it was their games did tend to be rather expensive in the end. Um, they started off 4 99 I think was pushing 9 99 uh, The idea being, I think, they was trying to um, stop um, software theft and pirating because um, they felt if people had paid it's like $9.99 for a game or thereabouts, they're less likely to let their friends copy the game for free. What made this game cool as well, which I've never seen before, um, it had a day and a night cycle. Now the lighting didn't change, but during the night, Saber Man would turn into a wolf, and when he went to day, he changed back into Saber Man. So that was the curse he was trying to solve. So he's trying to rid himself of the curse and escape from the castle as well, but I think you've got to put items in a cauldron at the end uh, to please a wizard. As I said, the game was revolutionary in its time. It used a game engine called Filmation, which Ultimate uh, designed, and they were to maybe overuse this too much in future games to create a lot of similar games that weren't overly original. But Night Law is where it happened. Um, if you're into retro gaming, particularly the Spectrum, uh, Night Law is one to go down in the book as, as a historic point. Controls were a little bit awkward. It took a bit of a while to get used to. You couldn't even always see Saber Man when he was behind something. Sometimes there were some raised elevations and stuff like that. So in terms of 1984, that's all that come out on the ZX Spectrum. There was a, a game on the Commodore 64 at least called Staff of Carnap, I believe, but that was never released on the Spectrum. I don't know why it wasn't released on the Spectrum, a bit much the same that Attic Attack wasn't released on the Commodore 64. It would have, either game would have worked good on each system, but for some reason it never happened. And there were just two games in 1985, so one could have thought that uh, maybe Ultimate was starting to lose a little bit of speed, or maybe their games were taking longer to develop and to design. Um, but yep, the uh, next game was Alien 8, which really borrowed a lot from Night Law, although it was a different theme. Again, it was the 3D isometric view type game, used the Filmation engine again, but this time you had to control a robot on a spaceship. All kids love space, don't they? So perhaps it was a good move. And essentially, you must ensure the survival of all the sleeping passengers, cryogenically frozen or in hyperspace, for the duration of the voyage. You have different jobs to do and different puzzles to solve. Again, the game was largely monochrome to avoid a colour clash and some of the criticisms at the point was uh, though the game was clever it was maybe far too similar uh, to Night Law which come before it but Alien 8 wasn't as big a hit as Night Law and didn't deserve to be but I think they was milking it a, a little bit but the game was okay but again very very difficult if I had to choose between this one and Night Law to play I'd go to Night Law every time. And the last game of 1985, which Ultimate signed off with, was Nightshade. Um, again, using uh, an, the Filmation engine. Uh, I think they were like, stuck with that now. But it was an advanced version of Filmation. Had a few extra bits. Uh, was a bit cleverer use of colour, because this wasn't all in monochrome. But essentially, with a Nightshade, you control a knight who must track down four demons in a plague-infested village and destroy them all by using one, either one of four objects which he must also find. The four objects are either a hammer, a bible, a crucifix or a hourglass. I think that was in random bits of the map and occasionally a, an arrow will be on the road to tell you what direction to go to, what's the nearest demon. So find the objects, don't lose energy, find the demon, kill them of the right um, object. So that concludes really all the games that were released by Ultimate Play the Game in 1984 and 1985. Um, some good games, a few hit and misses, Ultimate starting to rely bit too heavily on the filmation techniques but overall not a bad set. I don't want to keep going on about it but I prefer the simple games in 1983, Jetpack, Attic Attack, all those sort of ones. Underworld was a bit of a letdown, Night Law was a big hit, Saber Man was a huge hit. So if you um, like watching that make sure you're tuned in for episode 3 where we'll be finishing off Ultimate Play of the Games. Um, after that, uh, the series isn't going to end. We'll uh, have a few other subjects, maybe software houses, game characters, and all that sort of stuff. If you've got any ideas what you'd like to be discussed in Spectrum Talk in the future, then put your thoughts below, and I'm bound to jot that down. Uh, we're always after new ideas, and this channel tends to be uh, forum-based, community-based, and I try and involve you as much as possible. 
Um, can't do everything, but I'll try and squeeze it in if I can. So thank you for watching Spectrum Talk again. Um, this might be twice a week. We might even go to three times a week, depending on its popularity. So till next time, take great care of yourself and a very fond goodbye. Goodbye.